Back to the Good Morning Ninja show. And uh, I go always they talk this, so happy Democracy Day, because uh, I know everybody don't day outside. Everybody only expects uh, a lot of things from the government. And this is a situation, this is a time where we need to look uh, inwardly as Nigerians and see the positivity and uh, how we go fit and move forward. Well, we move on to our next conversation where we get with uh, a political um, strategist and a convener of Ready to Lead Africa. And uh, in name now, uh, God bless Otubu. And uh, he's going to be having a conversation with us uh, regarding this whole situation, how uh, uh, the democracy don't be, and a lot of other political uh, related issues. So let's have him with us today. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Yeah, welcome. Hello, God yeah, welcome. bless. Yeah, welcome. Welcome. Good to see you. Yeah, Thank you welcome, for joining sir. us. <laughs> Happy Democracy Day. <laughs> Happy Democracy Day to you guys and everyone in Nigeria and around the world who watch TV. All right, beautiful, beautiful. So uh, I would like to ask them just uh, to, to start up a conversation. What, what, what do you think about uh, the, the democracy so far in Nigeria? Because we've been doing, it's been a conversation on the show today. We're asking people, uh, how, what would you say if you're giving a, a score sheet, a report card, what would you say how the democracy has been in Nigeria so far? Um, so I, I've had to also answer this question uh, with some other uh, TV and uh, radio station, and I and I said that when you look at the place where we are in terms of our democratic development and how we build on the idea of government of by and for the people, mm -hmm. we are not making the best progress that we can make. Um, what happened in 2015 uh, was actually a test that we can get things right. But mm -hmm. if you look at every other thing that has happened post-2015, uh, and then we go to 2019 and, and all that, I can tell you that we are not developing the very institutions that, 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 that make democracy work. Mm -hmm. Now, and I need to be very careful, I need to be very careful. Democracy is not all about elections. Okay. It's also about how society is integrated, how uh, the different moving parts, how the people take government, how government responds to the people. So I would tell you that on a, on a scale of 100, uh, 2015, we raised the bar. And after 2015, I can tell you the bar has been dropping. And and, 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 and and that's not even my uh, subjective opinion. It's our research, it's our fact. You know, that our, the, the, the institutions, relations with civil society, acceptance for dissent and civil disobedience. You cannot even say that uh, we have more to do that these days. Hmm. All right. Um, God bless. You've been very, uh, very, very particular about young people. I mean, you were the state coordinator for the Not Too Young to Run movement, and now you are the founder of this new organization. So I want to ask you, judging from, you know, from the moment when you started the Not Too Young, or you were a part of the Not Too Young to Run movement, how would you say the government has welcomed young people? Have young people been more involved in governance? Are you impressed with uh, whatever state we are in? Give us a status report. Uh, so, so, I mean, if you look at uh, uh, governments across the country, especially at state levels and local government levels, and I mean, you would also say the federal level at, at, at certain levels, uh, you find out that, okay, sorry, uh, my, uh, my grandma is, uh, oh, okay. it's, it's fine, fine. it's fine, <laughs> it, it, it's, it, it's understandable because we know this, this is, this is the, this is the new normal, the new change based on coronavirus. We need to do this virus, you know, the internet. So it's fine. And that's, also that's part of, that's part of mommy's democracy. That's part she of mommy's democracy. Freedom she's celebrating freedom to speak. <laughs> you know, it's, it's democracy. All right. So yes, go ahead. Go ahead if you can. Okay. So, um. What we've seen is that the youth bulge and the fact that a lot of us got involved with the Not Too Young to Run campaign and we got that bill through the door, uh, literally opened the conversation of more youth inclusion in government. And I can tell you that there are states that are making real efforts 
to get more young people in government. But I can say that about uh, the Buhari-led administration. I don't have the statistics from, from the administration on what they've done with young people appointments or what have you. But I know that there are states that are deliberately finding opportunities for young people because, see, whether you like it or not, you're not doing anybody a favor by giving young people opportunity. It is the way society is designed to run. I, I, I think to give young people opportunity or young people to go and take this and opportunity. And take it, yes. Is, that, is this the case? Because like you said, you're not doing a favor to give. Yeah. But on the part of the responsibility of the young people, is it that the young people should yeah. go and get this, uh, this um, uh, appointments? What, what, how, how would you put that? So this is it. It's not whether young people, look, if you give young people opportunity, young people will take it. That's okay. the truth. So uh, I can tell you that aggregatively, we have not seen the kind of urgency that governments and, and the state leaders in Nigeria today and are supposed to be showing. You have a population over 60% mm -hmm. below 35 and then when you look at the quotient of young leaders in public office, in public institutions in the on the continent or in Nigeria, it's not what we should be having. So the idea, therefore, is that it's not that they've made opportunities available and young people are not taking it. It's simply to say that they have created a whole lot of stress around the opportunities that have been created so that young people find it wow. difficult to even I access it and see it. Oh. Okay, yeah. so 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 you, what, what you're saying in a sense is that young people have been frustrated out of the opportunities that are available. Oh my God! I, 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 look, I can tell you that for free. Um, so I, I, I mean, based on the work that I do and the work we do around the Lead Africa, we've been engaging with a lot of. Uh, people, stakeholders at different levels. And we were having a conversation with a former Speaker of the House of Assembly, and he told us this word. I'm not going to call names, I'm not saying the state. He said, how will you guys get tickets from the parties that can win elections? Because they are now overly expensive, and that is what uh, the system has created. And even when you say young people should be given an appointment, the first thing you hear, and sometimes what they say is that, are young people ready to lead? And that is also one of the reasons why today we are we are we're, we're starting you know we're leading a conversation around the country on why the ninth national assembly must get the electoral amendment bill passed. So young people are ready to lead. Young people can serve. Young people have the energy. Mm -hmm. That is why the philosophers of old they said, look, any society that wants to grow, if you shut out your young people, you are doing yourself a great disservice. And you are only going to remain poor and poor and poor. Now, uh, I, I was having a conversation earlier with uh, Olive regarding how this, uh, the young people sometimes even shy away from elections. They're like, ah, Great. I don't want to vote. It's, it's I beg, I beg. I don't have that stress. It's really not. If, if I vote, it won't count. So uh, this is also a concern. It's also a situation. They believe politics mm -hmm. is not something mm -hmm. that you would get involved in because it's... Uh, it's not clean, or it's uh, it's very very you know it's 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 tasking, you know. So what would you say about that? Having youths who still have that that ideology that I can't get into this, I would rather not vote. Let me just be and be doing what I'm doing on my own. How, wh what would you have to say about this? Oh, oh, great! That is that is an amazing question, and thank you for it. I, I think I've been meaning to, to you know speak to young people across this country. Mm. See, the worst human being, the worst human being that you can find, is the man who thinks that his work or his life does not have an implication on what he or she does engaging the society or the system. The people who see the reason why you don't have light, the reason why you don't have good education, the reason why you don't have good healthcare system, the reason why in, the, in a country of over 200 million people there is no underground rail system, the reason you don't have cable cars, the reason you don't make your cars, the reason you don't do a lot of things is because you think you are, you and the society are mutually exclusive. You are not. Mm -hmm. You are the 
engine room of how society is designed. So for every young man and woman who's listening, you may be a fashion designer, you're in the, you're in the entertainment world, you, you have your own business, and you think, oh, I don't have the vote. I, I, it's, it's none of my business, it's too stressful. Guess what? The stress you are facing right now, taking one step forward and nine steps backward, is because you give the people who shouldn't be making decisions for your life the opportunity to do so. Hmm. So I'm saying to every young man and woman, we've got to come, look at what is happening in the U.S. There is pandemic. The U.S. Is the, is the epicenter of coronavirus. But go to Georgia, go to Atlanta, go to, um, go to Pennsylvania. Today, as I speak to you, people are, are voting yeah. because they understand they are. Look, it is that decision that determines how society will move. So for every young man who is listening today, who is watching, for every parent, please tell your kids, tell them once they are above 18, they need to register, they need to get a PVC, they need to vote. And when you do that, understand that it is going to be stressful. Hmm. In building societies, we cannot leave it to the older generation. The younger generation must step up, get involved in the system, vote, and determine who becomes president, governor, House of Reps, Senate, Councillor and hold them accountable. All right. It's not going to be easy. As we as we prepare for the next elections, we still have a, a bit of time to go. You know, whilst yeah. we are advocating for people to vote, what other things? What are other civic responsibilities that young people can you know display towards showing that they're very they are really ready to lead? Beyond, not everybody is going to run for office. Not everybody would uh, uh, be a member of a House of Representatives or would be a governor or a commissioner. Not everybody would be in the active face of leadership. But if, if there's one thing I know about leadership, it's beyond holding titles and being in front of the, uh, being at the helm of affairs. What are some of the things you would say to young people in preparation, you know, for 2023 and as well as just being everyday leaders, showing responsibility? What are some of the words you would say? So for me, the first thing that I will say is what we are currently doing today. So today is June 12th, and myself and a whole lot of other young people across this country, and even in the U.S., uh, we are standing up and demanding action from the Ninth National Assembly to pass and sign, uh, to pass the Electoral Amendment Act into law so that the president can sign it. Uh, before the last general elections, uh, we had the opportunity of uh, the eight assembly passing the Electoral Amendment Act. The president said, "Oh, there were drafting concerns, and then he couldn't sign. The, he couldn't sign it." What young people are doing now is that we're leading an advocacy campaign across the 36 states of the country and the FCT, and we are simply asking the ninth assembly to say, "Before 2023, we need a new Electoral Amendment Act." INEC is not an outsourced institution. INEC would only conduct elections based on the electoral act available to them. Mm -hmm. So people must understand, and young people have come to realize that. So what we are now doing is we're engaging our lawmakers. We're speaking to senators. We're talking to House of Rep members. We are knocking on doors. We are marching. We are raising our placards. Today, as I speak to you, we're, we're implementing what we call the 12 pillars of democracy across the entire state. In each of the state of Nigeria, 12 people are standing up as ready to lead African members, and they're holding placards and saying, honor June 12, pass electoral reforms. Why are we doing that? Because we need to send a strong message to the Deputy Senate President, Omar Agege, who is leading that bill to say, we need expedited action. We need electoral amendment done by the second quarter of 2020. So that what happened to us in 2018 will not happen again. Look at what they did. They delayed the No to Young to Run bill and passed it very close to the election. We couldn't educate our people. We couldn't do mass light, uh, you know, public mass enlightenment. We couldn't, you know, build the fabric of the new law into the society. And well, you say, well, we tried. We got 300 people elected. But this is what we want to do. Young people have said, we're going to get the electoral amendment done before 2023 so that we can educate our people, so that we can do mass enlightenment, so that people can participate. All of this is what young people are doing. So we're not waiting till 2022. No, we are saying to the Senate, we're saying to the president, enough is enough. Young people are demanding action on electoral amendment. And if you don't act, we will activate our civil disobedience right, 
We will march peacefully. We will demand action. We will, we will come to your office asking you to take action. We're not going to sit by and watch this country go down the rooms because young people are ready to lead Africa and we will get it done. Hmm. Now, uh, to just uh, have a quick run through, what exactly is this amendment that, uh, for people who don't know, if you can just run us through real quick, what exactly is this amendment about? Okay, great. So the amendments are, they're, 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 they're like, so we have about 12 highlights that okay. we're currently sharing today. Okay. So, um, if you look at a, a dose state and a dose state that doesn't have an election uh, sometime this year, yeah. The form, the form, the 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 form cost twenty million naira. Just mm. the form. Mm. Now, what are we asking for? The new the new electoral amendment is reducing that to just ten million. That one is one. Okay. So we're going to see a reduction on the cost of forms. But I think for councillorship now it's around one hundred and fifty thousand. Okay. You know, House of Reps. You know, like a, a lot of a lot of offices have been have, have been brought down. Yeah. Two. We're going to have electronic database. Unfortunately, we've wow. lost. God bless Otubure. Um, he hmm. he was given. Okay, I think he's. I think he's back. All right, I'm back. Okay, I think okay. So we are talking about a data I... database. Yes. Yeah. So I was talking about the electronic database of all yeah. the voters and elections. Free. INEC will have a set. Um, I believe that what is happening now is that someone is trying to call God bless, if I am correct. Yes, someone is trying to call God bless. I think I already told them not to do that again because I'm on a, I'm on a live set. But, okay. you know, this, this is our new reality and we've got to deal with it. <laughs> so, um, yes. so we have the, the, the server where all election results will be put. Mm -hmm. And then four, you know the issue that happened in Kogi that brought uh, Yahaya Bello about the candidate that died and all of that. So there's a new clause that says that when a candidate dies, there has to be a renomination and INEP will wait and all of that will be sorted before anybody is sworn in. Mm -hmm. And then you have uh, the other thing where the use of electronic voting, right? So mm -hmm. the new law when passed into law, will give INEP discretionary powers to use a means of electronic voting. So it means that we can get our diaspora community to vote. Uh, there are other ones uh, that I, you know, I, I, I can continue to mention. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. goal is that also now the most one of the most important ones is that anyone who is going to be working with INEC moving forward would have to declare their party affiliation. Failure to do that, you are going to go to jail. Mm. Um, so, so the idea is that, and then one of the most important part of this of, of this deal is the fact that we're going to have election materials inspected uh, before every election. So we'll use videos. You can come with your team, inspect election materials, and all of that. And look, the the the, the amendment is going to it won't solve all of our problems. But it would dr it would drastically bring back some level of acceptability, credibility to the process. So, all right. Uh, the election. Okay, go on, please. Yeah, go on. Okay. Now, I was going to ask you very quickly because we've run out of time. In a few seconds, you highlighted about um, the voting, the digital voting that would afford some of our diaspora uh, citizens the opportunity to vote. There have been arguments for and against that. Some people stating yeah. that members, uh, Nigerians in the diaspora, personally don't get to experience firsthand you know, leave the reality yeah. of Nigeria and say they don't pay their tax here, so why are they giving the opportunity to, be vo to vote? These are one of the arguments that have been put against. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, well, my thoughts are simple. So the question is, so the question is, how do we, how do we create a regime system where those who are not even in the country are able to make contributions or some level of commitment to the country? That is what they are saying. But this is it. These guys are literally responsible for most of the remittances that come back to the country, right? Sometimes our remittances are even way more higher than our FBI. So I really don't understand where that conversation is coming from. If you hold a Nigerian passport, right? So are you not saying that the Americans who vote from other parts of the world, is that the conversation that they have? So let's just not even go into whether they are paying taxes or not. Are they Nigerians or not? That is mm -hmm. the question. People who vote at, at an election are not those who pay their taxes. 
you pay your taxes a lot, does not disenfranchise you from exercising your fundamental human rights. So I just think that should be uh, should be stated out there. Very true. All right. Thank Amazing. you so much. God bless. Indeed, every Nigerian should be given a chance to vote to determine who they want to lead the country, whether mm -hmm. they're in Nigeria or not. And also, it's important yeah. that all of us are involved in this process. Democracy is a movement, and mm -hmm. it's beyond voting, yeah. like you have said. We must all actively yeah. hold our public officers to account, ask the right questions, and mm -hmm. be present, yeah. educate, share our history. Yeah. These are the ways mm -hmm. in which mm -hmm. we can keep our democracy alive. Happy Democracy Day once again. God bless, and thank you very much. And congratulations thank to you, you and your team. Well done on the work that you're doing. Thank you so much. And today, where we are recognizing and honoring June 12, we want to say that we are asking the President and the Senate, you have to take action because June 12 is our democracy day and the pillar upon which every democracy is built is credible elections. God bless All you. Right. God bless you. Thank you for supporting and partnering with us. All, All right. right. Thank you very Thank much. You very God much bless. And we wish time. you all the best. Thank you for your time. We've been speaking with God bless Otubere, who is the founder of Ready to Lead Africa and was Lagos State Coordinator for Not Too Young to Run. He has spoken so passionately about Democracy Day in Nigeria. What we need to do, what needs to be done, most especially the involvement and the necessity of young people being carried along in this race. Young people need to demand a seat at the table. There's been so much improvement, but more can be 